Joining us from Omaha men's basketball program, head basketball coach, Chris Crutchfield, student athletes, Frankie Fiddler and Markel Sutton. Normal press conference procedure will be opening statement from coach. We'll take questions for the student athletes, dismiss the student athletes back to the locker room, then come back to questions for coach. We do have a microphone, so please wait for the microphone. State your name and affiliation prior to your question. Go ahead with your opening statement, coach. Yeah, uh, first of all, I mean, great college basketball game, guys. I thought I thought our guys stayed in there and fought it out. Uh, got a five-point lead in the first half. Felt like uh, we was in a good position to maintain. Uh, J.J. picking up those two fouls really hurt us, lost a little offensive momentum. And they went on a run and took the lead at halftime, which I didn't like the fact that we lost that lead and they had the lead at halftime. But uh, what a battle in the second half, man. They beat down 10 points and... Uh, our guys just show a lot of toughness, a lot of resilience to be able to, to fight back and be down 10 or 11 points and to be able to come back and do what they did, man, shows a lot of toughness. And that's why you keep fighting and keep playing in March. But I'm proud of the fight. I'm proud of uh, these guys stepping up and, and making the right play when it was time to make the right play. And that's what it's all about at this time of the year. We'll go ahead and open up questions for the student athletes. We'll start in row two. Tim Hill reaching the Summit podcast. You know, Frankie, just talk about those last few moments there of, uh, you know, bef the timeout situation and the, the game winner. Yeah, I think, um, you know, coach coach put it on my shoulders to to win the game. And, you know, that, that's what I did. Um, he also said, if we get three stops, we're going to win the game. And I think we got three stops and we won the game. So. Frankie Domizzo, WDAY and Fargo, just the grinded out kind of game. How how much did you enjoy this after how the season started, ended to get this win tonight? Yeah, uh, it was definitely a good feeling to win tonight. Um, we're definitely not satisfied with, with just one win, but to, to come back down nine with three minutes left, uh, you know, it's special that this group just doesn't quit. And, you know, that's why I love playing with these guys. Tanner Castor with the Brookings Register. Frank, you were asked to do a lot tonight, and you did. How was your stamina level during the last few minutes of this game? Uh, it was low, but, um, you know, off season, I ran a lot to get myself ready for times like this. So i um, going to have the ice bath tonight for sure, uh, get some good sleep, a lot of fluids, uh, but I'll be good. Uh, for you, Markel, that big year for you, one of the most improved players in the league, uh, some big moments tonight seemed like when a lot of attention was on Frankie, you just seemed to come out of nowhere with some big plays, whether it be offensive boards or just attacking the rim. Just how was this experience for you tonight? Really getting your moment as well. Man, it was a uh, great experience. <clears throat> and I just uh, rely on my motor, you know, to keep me going on the defensive end and offensive end. And uh, I'm pretty much a second option. So I just got to be ready whenever it's my time. Todd Buckingham reaching something. Frankie, what would it have taken for you to give up that ball last shot? <laughs> uh, maybe if all five of them ran at me and someone was wide open under the rim. We'll go last question right here. Mike McFeely from the Forum in Fargo. Markel, just a comment on your teammate here and, and his performance tonight. It was just huge the way Frankie played the whole game. Man, he did great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, it's nothing new. Uh, I've seen him work his butt off the whole off season, and even during the season, he always in the gym at night, and I see him in there. And you know, he's just expected from. Him. He's a great player. Thanks, fellas. You Thanks, can, man. You, you can have exit lockers. We'll start in row two. We'll open up questions for coach. Coach, you almost spit your water out there on that last question. You know, just talk about your trust and faith in Frankie in those big moments. You know, you, you got a great team uh, all around, but Frankie's the go-to guy. Everybody knows it's going to him, and just that faith that you have in him. Well, he's 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 been solid for us all year. I mean, he's been that guy that, that down the stretch, we always try to run something to get him the ball, and even to close out a game in the last three minutes in early games in the year, we want to put in his hands and make sure. But he's a talent. He can score at three levels. And I think everybody knows that. And I think he thrives in moments like this. And uh, he's a great competitor. And I'm glad he's on my team. Obviously, Frankie had a big night and so did Sutton. But I liked what I saw from Nick Davis. Mm -hmm. 
What did you see from, from your big fella? I thought Nick was really solid. I thought he did a great job. We wanted to throw the ball inside. We thought we had an advantage with Nick. Uh, and he did a great job. I mean, 12 points and seven rebounds. He left, you know, five free throws, you know, on the board. So, I mean, it's a great night for him for the amount of times that we go to him. But he's a presence for it. He gives us rebounds. He can score around the rim. So uh, we need him to continue to, to, to get better and continue to play every night like he did tonight. Crutch, you guys were down 10, and it seemed like you were trailing, I think, 33 minutes of the game or yeah. something like that. How, how do you keep your guys engaged? How do you keep it from not – things weren't going your way at times. How do you keep them in the game and keep them fighting? Just keep, just challenge them in those timeouts, man. And I challenged them those last three minutes about getting stops. And, and, and it kind of went back to our summer workouts, our trip to Costa Rica, and we just started talking about those kind of moments. Like, guys, this, this is what it's all about. This is why we worked our butt off in the summer. This, this is why we took the trip to Costa Rica. This is what it's all about. Now we're in March. Now let's let's give it up here these last three minutes of this game and see what happens. And they did it. I mean, they got three stops and got three scores. And and uh, I'm proud of what they did because a lot of teams would have probably folded. And and we had a lot of close games this year, guys. I don't know you guys know. It. We we came out on on the other end in a lot of them, and they just kept believing, kept believing. Chris, Tom Izzo from the uh, WDAY in Fargo. Is this uh, result, this game, kind of typify the entire Summit League season where everybody has beaten everybody this season? That's exactly right. And we said that coming up here on the trip, like this, this, this might be the first year that I talked to Coach Brown, Kai, and our assistant about, have you ever seen a league like this before? And he's been in the league for a long time. He said, no, first time ever. So uh, kind of give us guys some hope. You can be the second seed or the third seed. It doesn't really matter where you are in this league this year. Uh, anybody could beat anybody. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Joining us from North Dakota men's basketball program, head coach Paul Saylor, student athletes BJ Omot and Trayson Eaglestaff. Normal proceedings will be opening statement from coach. We'll take questions for the student athletes. We'll release the student athletes and come back to questions for coach. As always, there is a microphone. Please wait for the microphone. Identify your name and affiliation ahead of the question. Go ahead with your opening statement, Coach. Uh, yeah, um, tough one. I mean, felt like we, you know, we were in pretty good control of the game. Um, and, you know, every time they were scoring kind of down the stretch, we we had answers. We were getting some stops um, when we needed to. But, you know, it's just the last few minutes. The last few minutes we we – you know, we had a turnover, and then we we just had some defensive rebounds we just weren't able to get. And you you got to give guys credit for going and getting it and keeping balls alive for them. And uh, there was a few possessions there. If we just get one of those, uh, makes a big difference. Uh, but you know, I part of me is just in shock still because it it just felt like it was a game that we were we had good control of, uh, and then it just it kind of spiraled quick. And uh, the opportunities were there. We just, man, we didn't inside. I mean, as good a rebounding team as we've been, giving up second shots and second chance point hasn't been something we've, we've been really good at that. And I just felt like that kind of got us down the stretch. Um, but I thought we competed. I thought we played our butt off, all those things. Um, we just had a bad couple minutes. We'll go ahead and open up. Questions for the student athletes, row two. Uh, Tim Hill, Reaching the Summit Podcast. Just a question for both of you guys. You know, obviously, tough night, not the result you wanted, but it still doesn't take away what you guys did this year. Just a phenomenal season. You guys, two of the key cornerstones, you know, what are you going to look back at, you know, once this is all passed, about uh, what you're most proud about this season? Uh, I'm, just, I'm just really proud of my boys. Uh, looking back last year, uh, 
we just improved so much. Like, this is such a different team than last year. But uh, obviously, we didn't come out with the outcome. But uh, I'm just proud of them, for real. Yeah, I mean, I'm just blessed to be here. I mean, mm -hmm. like, come back this whole year, I'm just, again, what BJ said, just proud of everyone. Uh, how far we've come from beginning of the year to now is just crazy. Like, it's stuff you see in movies, to be honest. But, yeah, just blessed. Any other questions for the student athletes? We'll go right there. Just now, what was the locker room like between the players? Uh, obviously, everybody was hurt. Uh, no words. It's like it's stuff that happens that you can't really say nothing. You just feel the pain, but uh, we just got to move on. Yeah, it still doesn't feel real, to be honest. Just looking at Brady Danielson and Sunday and how much work and leadership they've shown us all. I mean, it just knowing that we could have had another game for them just really hurts, yeah. All right, thanks, fellas. You can head back to the Thanks, guys. We'll go ahead and open up questions for Coach. Front row. Coach, talk about the Emory Gym Summit. Um, it was pretty clear, at least from, from watching, that there was no issue with effort for either team. No. Uh, and it just... Like you said, it just kind of got away at the end there. How would you reflect on the difference between last year and this year and just what you got from the team? I just think the way we I think the way we finished the season last year with these guys and the rest of the guys in that locker room that were here last year had a lot to do with the momentum this year. Um, you know, we we had some really good additions uh to this team that I think all brought something that really added value to it as well. Like, um, this is hard because it's like, I, I, this has not hit me yet uh, that we, I won't get to be coaching these guys tomorrow. Um, but I've, I've just even, and I told these guys this when we had lost that stretch coming out of Christmas, I, I just said, my gosh, this is, I'm just having a blast coaching you guys. They really like each other. They 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 showed up every day when we had spells that that uh, didn't necessarily go our way. Like they just didn't point fingers, blame. We didn't have stuff we dealt with with these guys that way. They really were a, a unified, united team, um, and, and just a fun fun group to coach. And and uh, different guys at different times throughout the season all made some huge plays for us. And then the guys that weren't playing as much or not even at all late, um, just 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 the character they showed as far as being great teammates, showing up every day, helping each other get better, um, like the you know the culture word, all that. But like, I just really enjoyed showing up and working with these guys every day. Awesome guys. Mike McFeely from the forum. Paul, can you just walk us through that the last play that they scored on? You knew Fiddler was going to get. Killed. Yeah, you know, yeah, they, you know, they're trying to get him a catch and then you know create some kind of switch opportunity. Um, and uh, man, I thought you know we he was coming right at us all night, you know, especially in that second half. And I thought our guys were doing a pretty good job to making him have to make tough shots. I even thought that one's was a pretty tough shot. Um, He's a, he's a big physical kid that has a great amount of skill that finishes really well with contact. And then he makes free throws really well. Um, and we knew, we knew it was going to be some sort of ball screen or some sort of, obviously him getting the ball and forcing some kind of switch. And uh, he made it tough too. You got to give him credit for that. Paul Domizzo at WDAY. I asked Crutch this. I know you and I talked earlier in the season. Does tonight kind of typify the whole year of what the league was that anybody yeah. literally could beat anybody on a game? You know, absolutely. We've, we've, we've talked about that, like the seed aspect of it. It's like almost kind of funny sometimes with how it's seeded out in a lot of ways um, because it, it's, it's kind of playing out like the seed just didn't really matter much. Um, and I, I, I just felt like, you know, one of the things I think – the, the league that the, the part of the league last year that maybe um, were was more on the bottom of the league. I just think we all got a lot better. And and uh, I think it's made the league a lot better. Um, and, and that's great. Um, but it's 
it's a it's a really it's a really good league, really good coaches, really good student athletes. Um, it's it's fun to be able to come out and compete against these teams we play in the Summit League. I just think there's a lot of pride in how people do it in this league, and and you can see that. So it's 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 great to be a part of it. You know, like you said earlier, you guys were up most of the game. It just felt like you always kind of had a lead. What, what yeah. was your message? Because Crux said his message was, you know, don't quit. You know, we're still in this game. What was the, what was your message? Keep attacking. You know, you know, we we just we we're saying a lot of the same things throughout timeouts, and that's just staying engaged defensively, really making it about defending and rebounding, taking care of the ball. I felt like throughout the game we we just got a little bit careless with the ball. The physicality got the best of us on a few plays where we didn't handle it well enough. So we were just really emphasizing being strong, taking care of it, you know, passing up good ones for great ones. Let, let's let's offensively um just be strong attack and 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 you know not give up on who we are offensively um and then defensively we just kept on talking about you know really doing uh, slowing down 23 um and then you know got doing our job with the rest of the guys uh and uh and then you know the rebound aspect of it and that's been something that we've really been able to count on this year and it's not just that there was other plays that happen uh, throughout, but but boy, we just we had opportunities. All we needed to get was one defensive rebound, just one, and our guys were fighting their butts off for it. We just we just didn't get one. We'll go to the last question right here in the second row. Coach Tim Hill here again at reaching the summit. You know, obviously, like I said to the other guys, it doesn't take anything away from what you guys accomplished this year in the regular season. Just feels like there's an identity to UND basketball now, what you have built. Do you feel like you now have an identity when you're going to go into the recruiting trail this yeah. spring and summer and what you want, what you want for, to build for? For sure, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's trickier nowadays, right, with all that stuff. There's no doubt. But, you know, I think, you know, I really, I love, I love coaching this group. And, man, I, I just, I want to give a shout-out to Brady and, and T because those are two guys that, they came here when things were really, really difficult. You know, Brady came in when I got the job um, and was up for that challenge. And then, you know, T, we, we recruited T during, uh, during COVID recruiting when all we could do is watch him on film and he couldn't visit. So he got some kid from Georgia that's living out in Modesto and going to Juco up in, you know, College of Southern Idaho and he's, he's going to Grand Forks and, it's just been a joy coaching those two guys. And, and you know, they have a lot to do. And, and, you know, Trayson talked about it. They just, they've had a lot to do with everyday guys that show up with the right mentality, right attitude. Um, and it's just, I just, I think the other guys have a lot of that same makeup. Um, like I said, coming to work every day, my goodness. People talk about it's hard and this and that. I get to coach basketball every day and I get to be around these guys. And, um, you know, I'm excited about what the future is. But, you know, just like any any year, you've always got new challenges that come up and we just got to keep fighting for us and our identity and who we are and keep, keep improving. You know, keep getting better. Keep improving. And that's that's going to be the goal. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thanks.